at chapter 7, we're going to make a little bit of that bond. We're really going to focus on something called covalent bonds. In order to understand what that is, you have to know what all the types of bonds are. So obviously from the title, covalent is one of our types of bonding. We also have something called ionic. And the last one is called metallic. Now covalent bonding is when you have a nonmetal and a nonmetal bonded together. And remember, we have the periodic table so we can tell what those are. We have this step going down here. Most of those elements touching the step are semi-metals, except aluminum, it's a metal. So all over here are metals. Over here are non-metals. So if you have two from this right side, let's say carbon and oxygen, you have a covalent bond. If you have one from over here, like sodium, and one from over here, chlorine, that's called an ionic bond. They're coming together because they have two different ions, a cation and an anion. So an ionic bond is a metal plus non-metal. Which, of course, metallic, you can kind of tell just by the name, that's where you're going to have two non-metals together. Metal plus, I'm sorry, two metals together. Metal plus metal. Ionic bonds can sometimes be called compounds. Okay, so anything with an ionic bond can sometimes be called compounds. They have very high melting points. Takes a while for them to melt, a lot of energy. And they dissociate in water. D I S S O C I A T E. That means they break up in water and they make their ions. It's like salt. Salt you put in water dissolves. That's what we see dissolving. But it's not just dissolving, it's actually dissociating. Like that sodium is coming apart from that chlorine. So if you have NaCl and you put it into water, you get your sodium ions floating around and your chlorine ions floating around. Okay, and these ions actually conduct electricity. Which is why you have to get out of the water if there's ever lightning. Okay, because inside water, no matter what kind of water, whether it's pool water with the chlorine ions or it's salt water out in the ocean, those ions conduct the electricity. Now, the ocean isn't as big a deal if like, there's a lightning storm way off the coast because there's a lot of things that's going to hit in between. But if it's right on the shore, you do have to get out of the water. Covalent bonding, in the other case, is a sharing of electrons, whereas ionic is give and take. Covalent is formed by sharing paired electrons between two or more atoms or nonmetals. They have to be nonmetals. And they make what we call a molecule. You know the molecule of water, right? Well, that's two nonmetals, hydrogen and oxygen. That's why it's called a molecule. Now for covalent bonding, we're going to take a look at how to draw the sharing of electrons. In order to do that, we have to look at Gilbert Lewis. And back in 1916, he said that atoms tend to gain, lose, or share electrons so they can, they can get a full set of eight. And that way they behave like the noble gases. And they want to behave like the noble gases because then they're stable. They're inert. They don't react with anything. So this is how compounds or molecules in this case form, where they give or take or share electrons to become like the noble gases. So in this case, they're really just sharing. Ionic bonds is where they give and take. That's how they become ions. They give them away or they take them. Um, so they become positive or negative. But here we're just going to share them. And the electrons that are going to be involved here are something called valence electrons. We talked a little bit about them last chapter. They are the electrons. in the outermost energy level of an atom. They're the ones on the outside. I mean, in order to get to the ones inside, you have to go through the ones outside. So that's why the ones on the outside are really the only ones that have to do with bonding. The other ones can't reach through to the outside ones to get there. So it's what Gilbert Lewis put together, something called Lewis structure. Ways of showing how many valence electrons there are in each of these atoms, because they're the only ones that are involved in bonding. So on our periodic table, I'm going to get rid of this, um, I can show you exactly how many valence electrons each one has. And it's really, really easy if you can count to eight. 
These guys all have 1 because they're 1s1. People have 2. In the outside energy level in the sphere, they have 2 electrons. These guys, we don't worry about. Remember the Ds go down a level? So instead of that being like 4D, it's 3D. So it's no longer the outside energy level. So they have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is because you have, like, boron has 1x, or sorry, 2x2, 2p1. So there's two S's and one P. So it has three in the outside ring. So we can count up eight. You can know the number of valence electrons. That's important because in Gilbert Lewis's drawings called the Lewis structures, those are the only ones we draw. So sodium, we'll go back over here, it's right here. One electron. So we draw one dot. You might see this as Lewis dot structures. Magnesium, right here. Second one has two dots. Now, the trick is you want to make sure that you spread them out before you start doubling up. Here are your options of places. Let's say our element X. You can put one here, 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 or one there. Okay, so those are the outside eight electrons. And those are the places to put them. You just want to put one on each side first. It doesn't matter if you go left, right, up, down. So notice I go counterclockwise. I have no idea why, but I've always gone counterclockwise. Um, but it doesn't matter as long as they're spread out before you start doubling up. Aluminum. Right here, you need three electrons. One, two, three. Phosphorus. Over here. Five electrons. One, two, three, four. All right, they all have their own side, so I'm going to start doubling up. Five. Chlorine, right here, seven electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, my single one's down on the bottom. Argon is a noble gas, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I already knew there were going to be eight. Normally, I do one at a time all the way around and then double them up. But knowing there's going to be eight, and it's going to be doubled all the way around. Helium is the only tricky one. Look where helium is. It's right here. Okay, he's in the column that should have eight. But helium doesn't have eight electrons. Helium only has two. So helium is the only one that's going to look like this. It's going to be doubled up on one side. Now that says a lot for helium. It also says something for hydrogen over here. Hydrogen wants to be like helium. So he only needs two to have a complete octet. You know, ox means eight. Helium only needs two, and hydrogen only needs two to be complete. The reason is they have that one S ring, and it's so small, you can only fit two in there. So we start drawing them all together. It's just going to take a little bit of each. So I'm going to look at my fluorine. Fluorine right over here has seven. Okay, there's my fluorine, and I have two of them, so I have 7 plus 7 equals 14. I have 14 electrons to play with. Fluorine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So another fluorine, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. These bond, so you just draw a line. You don't have to have dots at all. When we get better at it, you won't even draw the dots, but for now I'm showing you how they connect. So fluorine, two together, and now you notice, 2, 4, 6, Eight. The bond counts as two electrons are being shared between the two. So this fluorine has eight. He's happy. This fluorine has eight. He's happy. Together around the whole picture, we only have 14. So that checks out. So that's a good drawing. HCl, we have one for a hydrogen, seven for a chlorine. We have eight total. H has one. Chlorine has seven. We bond those together. Remember, hydrogen's happy with just one bond, so we will always be on the outside. Chlorine now has eight, and together there are eight all around them. Nitrogen, he's right here, he has five. Hydrogen has three each, or I'm sorry, one each, making it three. So five plus one times three equals eight again. Now I just said hydrogen has to be on the outside. So I have nitrogen here, it's got five. Let's put a hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. And I'll have eight around them. Water. 
2 times 1 for my oxygen plus 6. I'm sorry, 2 times 1 for my hydrogen plus 6 for my oxygen is 8. Hydrogen has to be on the outside. Oxygen, hydrogen. Now I realize you're going to want to put those down top and bottom. When we get into shapes in just a day or so, you're going to realize why it's going to look like this because we're going to build it in the three dimensions. There's no way that could happen. So it's going to look like that. When you drew it all by yourself, it probably looked like this. Oops, sorry. What I'm telling you, it's going to be a bent shape. So it's going to be like this. CH3Cl. All right, so carbon gets four. Three times your hydrogen plus seven for your chlorine gives me 14. Now, if you ever have a carbon or anything in the carbon family, Anything in this family, you don't put them in the middle because they have four opportunities to bond, right? They have four dots one, two, three, four. All around them, they can get bonds. Three of them have to be hydrogen, which makes sense. Hydrogen has to be on the outside. Chlorine has seven, so he's going to want to bond right here. That's going to be a tetrahedral shape, four things all around it, like a square. Oxygen, six each times two. Equals 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you notice he has a lonely electron here. That's going to bond to that one. These are also lonely, so they will also bond. And that's where we get what's called a double bond. So it's going to look a little bit neater, like this. Okay, it's called a double bond. There are two electrons in each of those, so all of these have eight around them, so they're happy. And there's 12 around the whole picture. 2 times 1 for my hydrogen, plus 4 for my oxygen, plus 6, 12. Carbon goes in the middle, remember? I have two hydrogens. Let me stick those on first. I know they're going to go on the end. Now I have an oxygen. Oxygen has two electrons ready to bond. And carbon has two that are ready to bond. So you can get your double bond between your carbon and your oxygen. I'm just going to redraw it to make it look a little prettier. So it's going to look like we just did connect the dots like the 5-year-old. I'm going to do hydrogen. Bonded to the carbon, double bond to the oxygen, so we have another hydrogen sticking off. Carbon dioxide is next. Carbon has four plus two times my oxygen, so that's 12 and four is 16. The carbon in the middle. Oxygen has two opportunities to bond, remember? And carbon has four, so you're going to get that. C2H2, two times four plus two times one equals eight, nine, ten. Carbon's in the middle. I have two hydrogens. I'll put one on each end. Now, carbon has four opportunities to bond, so it still has three dots on it. So it only bonded one of them. So that's where we get what's called a triple bond. Nitrogen is five times two is ten. Now, nitrogen also has three opportunities to bond here. One, two, three. I can write it nice and neat. It's also going to have a triple bond. This is why it's in our atmosphere. It's like almost 80% of our atmosphere, so it's so hard to break that triple bond between the two nitrogens. So that's why it's hanging out in our atmosphere so much, it's hard to break down. Now, you can draw these a little differently. Now, the ones I just did are pretty simple and straightforward, so there's only really one way to draw them. But sometimes there's going to be more than one way to draw a Lewis structure, and we call these resonance forms. Now, there is a way to know which one is right. There's an equation. Okay, here's what it says in your book. The electron, the valence electrons minus the unbonded electrons plus one half of the bonded electrons is going to give you a number. Whichever one is closer to zero is correct. So what this is saying is you have your valence number, which we get off the periodic table. It's either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. Min or minus your dots plus gases. And this is only around your central atom. Okay. So it's a difference of all the valence electrons owned by the atom, the central atom, and one half of the bonded. Here's one, CH4O. There are two different ways to draw this. Closet, 
So you can draw it two different ways. Here are the two ways. That's the one most people come up with first. That's what I come up with second usually. Oh, it's a different color though. Same drawing, different color. Just so you can follow it all the way down. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to count the sh unshared electrons and the bonds around the carbon and the oxygen. So they're both kind of central atoms. And this way, no matter which way you solved it, hopefully you'll see which way I did. So the carbon here, dots around carbon are zero. Dashes is four. Oxygen, dots, is four. Dashes is two. So for carbon, four is my valence number, minus dots plus dashes equals zero. That looks good. Oxygen, 6 in my valence number, minus dots, plus dashes, equals 0. So that looks like a very good drawing. Let's see this one over here, though. Carbon, let's see, dots, is 2, dashes, is 3. For oxygen, dots, is 2, dashes, is 3. So I'm going to take my... Valence number 4 for carbon minus my dots plus my dashes. So 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. Oxygen, I take my 6, my valence number off the periodic table, minus my dots plus my dashes equals positive 1. So the one with the more zero, or the zero for your central atom, is the correct one. So that one's correct. Even though the other one balances out to zero, you want the one that has your central atom at zero. So it doesn't matter if you chose carbon or oxygen in this case as your central atom. You would have gotten the same one as being correct as the red one. There are a few exceptions to the octet rule, um, such as nitrogen, beryllium, and boron. Those are exceptions, and you're going to see those once in a while. Boron doesn't need all eight. He's very, very happy with just six. The way you know this is you add up how many there are on the periodic table. Okay, boron, right here, he's only three, right? So I have three plus seven times three is 24. The only way you can get 24 in here so that all the fluorines are happy is that boron doesn't have it. Beryllium's another one, completely happy without eight. Beryllium's over here. He starts with 2. So I have 2 plus 7 times 2 is 16. In order to get that, beryllium in the middle. It's fine, just like that. Now, nitrogen's weird because it comes in with an odd number. So 5 plus 6 is 11 for this one. Now, 11's just weird. So if you have one of those where you have nitrogen involved and it gives you an odd number, Nitrogen's the one that goes with one on one of its sides. Otherwise, they're all going to be paired somewhere. Nitrogen's your random one that might only have one. Like 5 plus 6 times 2 is 17. So for this one, we have oxygen to nitrogen, oxygen. Nitrogen has one up there. Oxygen will always be filled with 8, just like every other element. These are just some random ones that will not have full octets. Now, on the reverse of that, there are full that have expanded octets, meaning they have more than just eight. Now, most of these are right in the same spot in the periodic table. I'll erase this so you can see them. Right around there. I'm sure I got them all. Brilliant. Oh, antimony, taurine, and iodine. Missed a lot. All right, so we've got these. Those are the ones that have expanded octets. They're in the middle. They have D block consideration. So that's why they usually have an expanded octet. I wrote them out here also. Krypton and xenon are also included in that simply because of their D block. The most common ones are actually going to end with a halogen. 
it says especially here, but there really isn't especially. I mean, usually it's chlorine and fluorine, but you know, there is no especially there. But usually they end with a halogen. When you're drawing these, you want to put any extra electrons around the central atom. So if you're drawing it and you have extra, you put them around the extra atom, or the central atom. So 8 plus 4 times 7. 4 times 7 is 32. 32 and 8 is 40. We can put xenon. Chlorine, 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 right? He's got four around him. But looking at this, I only have 32. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, and I need 40. 32, we go 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. He has an expanded octet. If you ever need to put extra electrons, you put them around the central. It's the only way you're going to ever put extra electrons off. Okay, doubling, tripling, bonding will just make it less. This is the only way to make it more.